Oh, I'm just grabbing shit off the counter and walking in. Is that the craft beer? Yeah. I didn't come into this <laughs> intending to be an artist. You know, I studied graphic design. Printmaking was one module on a Friday afternoon, uh, and it just stuck with me. And by following through on that and doing courses and meeting other artists, working in the studios, uh, it just opens up this whole different kind of realm that I wasn't um, aware of, you know? And it just, it's just never ending. Like, it just keeps going and going and going. I'm Shane O'Driscoll, I'm a visual artist based here in Cork and working out of Cork Printmakers. I studied graphic design in Cork and after that I spent 10 years uh, in Dublin working in design and art direction. But I took up printmaking in final year college but always kept it going. I was always practicing my own artwork as my own creative output I suppose. I wasn't client led and the last few years I suppose I've kind of lent a bit more towards that and then Three years ago, just left Dublin, moved back down to Cork, back home. My artwork is developed digitally first on a computer. Like it's, it's, they're all the programs I would use as a designer, like full time. Um, but just use, I suppose, in a different way, you know. Um, compositions are kind of loosely put together in that. I mean, I never, the, the print, the final print that I make is never what was intended from the start. There's always a deviation or alterations. I, I enjoy the process of change and happenstance like that's where I get the kick the buzz for me is in the creation the process of not knowing but then suddenly it clicks into space and then you know that the gut says this is it each shape I suppose effectively is burnt into the screen so the screen is like it's a mesh it's a silk screen mesh um, here's one so as you can see there that's transparent so if I was to run a squeegee over that all the ink would pass through it so what we do is I get a a trough and we actually coat it on both sides with a UV reactive coating like a paint and then we cure it there to dry it and then when I print off all the individual shapes from a composition on the inkjet printer I oil them up so the light can pass through the white parts uh, and then I place all the individual shapes here you put the UV reactive coated screen here close it down it's effectively a light box you flick on the lights and it exposes the shapes onto the actual screen. Then when you take out the screen, you wash it down, and the shapes the light hasn't passed through, the water washes that out, and that's how you get the shapes trapped in there. You know, each colour is printed one at a time. It's not like a standard printer where it all comes out complete. Uh, it's all layered and built, and, you know, depending on the surface you work with or the paper or the size of the page, you know, I could, I could be halfway through a print and suddenly decide to cut a page in half and that totally alters the composition and that turns you off at a new angle and that's the fun element bring it from the digital you know which is what I did for years working as a designer it was all digital you work it up you send it off to printers but with this you're working from the complete start to the finish you're, you're mixing inks it's tangible it's tactile you become part of the artwork you know it is uh, a very different process to what I would have you know been doing before you know with that one piece of paper you could work on it for a day or weeks. Some, sometimes they sit there for months, you know, and you might have pulled something out and it's very much a building kind of process like that, you know, and that's, that's just the kind of fine art printmaking element of it. I put the radio on or do we? No, need a mic. It's mad, I always, always, ever gonna do it. Like I, from the moment I get up in the morning, it's always music playing. <laughs> it's like even like all, actually the, the titles of my artwork are all generally lyrics from songs or titles of songs I'm playing in the studio. So it kind of ties in with a place and time or to what I was listening to at the time, you know? You know, people are like, we're willing to take a risk this year on doing different stuff. I have definitely found that myself. I've visited projects that I kept putting in a long finger because it was just maybe I was put down to just not having time. Um, and it's important as a creative to kind of flex and make mistakes and, and 
and do the what ifs, you know, and because that's what leads you down different paths. And I think that's just a creative kind of exploration, definitely, you know, it's like, why not do that? There's no one, absolutely no one telling you that you can't. I think a lot of the time it's kind of in your own head. You can't, you've that fear of going, well, what if I do that? And then suddenly I just fall away and no one looks at my stuff anymore. But it's like, it's just one, it's just, you just don't know unless you do it. I mean, that's, you could always be thinking about the what ifs and it's, it's, it's important to, to kind of knock that and just say, why not? This year, I think, I think I did four pieces this year. Did one extra, one for luck. Um, they're kind of collage pieces. I kind of work into older prints. Like I never, I rarely throw away um, offcuts or errors in work. I always try to kind of keep it or work with it. Um, and what I've done in previous incognitos is taken older prints and cut, um, a window to the shape of the postcard and move it around and create new compositions so you're kind of creating a new artwork within an older discarded piece which is kind of nice you're giving me a new kind of energy a new life um so i've done that in other parts i've kind of done it with two different artworks and taken them and cut them and created collages which is nice because i don't do that often so i really enjoy that it's nice to kind of uh do something a bit different um for these so they are quite i suppose in a way they are very unique in their own they're not prints, they're not editions, they're kind of their own, I suppose, compositions and collages, they're their own unique artworks, you know. Um, and that's kind of fun because I, I rarely work on small scale things that size, so it's quite interesting just to kind of change it up and do that, you know. Okay, I'm going to butter this on nice. Look at that there now, look at that there now, huh? So yeah, like it's all, you know, it's quite, you know, time consuming, I suppose. It's not as well, everyone's kind of, Familiarity with print is just picture on the screen, you press go. Um, Would you consider doing that? It is handy. It is. <laughs> I have done that in circumstances, but I always like to um, have the hand connection. So I have done like, you know, a digital print and then um, I'd overprint it in gold myself, you know, just because it has that kind of connection with the artist. I always kind of like that, I suppose, you know, when you go from, I suppose, you know, work in design where it is, you send off your file to print and it comes back. There's not kind of a, a connection directly, but I do that, you know, I suppose it's kind of different mixed media, which is kind of fun as well, you know? Um, I think I just really grasped onto, I suppose the anonymity element of it, I suppose the accessibility element as well. Um, that fun of not knowing, of just buying by your gut. You know, I've always enjoyed that. Um, and I remember going to the first, there was the first one um, above in Dublin and I kind of ducked in early before work. I could get in there at half eight, maybe the gallery opened at nine and there's already a queue around the block and it's like, oh man, you know, I thought no one would know about this. And you're meeting people who were there overnight, you know, people were super eager to get an artist, they knew their work. Um, but then they kind of found new artworks while also kind of just, you know, perusing. So that's kind of nice. You're kind of happening upon new art and you're finding new art which is kind of great um as an artist it's nice to i suppose create work and people can kind of buy your work that might necessarily be able to you know get it or, or pay whatever it is in the gallery um which is nice you know if they really like your work you know you appreciate someone going out and queuing to kind of buy your artwork it's always a good thing um and the fact that it you know ties in and benefits uh, the charity of Jack and Jill, which is great as well. Like, I mean, like this year, the artworks are 60 euros and that goes on to pay for like four hours worth uh, of time for a nurse to take care of a child, um, which is great. You know, I mean, you know, it's one thing for me to be, you know, spending my time to create an artwork um, that someone will appreciate. But then again, you know, it's, it's that story that's connected with it. It resonates. This artwork like is you know, you're paying your 60 euros, but it's not just for you to have something nice and accessible on your wall. It really is on to paying for a nurse's time to take care of a sick child. Um, but then it also relieves the family who's been taking care of this child, you know, the parents, um, their siblings as well. So it goes a lot deeper than just a picture on a wall. I 
I think, like a lot of people, like in anything, like, well, maybe in art, people just seem to be put off with suddenly it's like, oh, well, art, I need to spend loads of money to buy good art. You don't. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of in all and anything. But I think with, in, with Incognito, it can act as a nice kind of introduction and a, and a, a stepping stone to learning about artists and new artists and you know you acquire something for 60 euros and you get attached to it and then you might become attached to that artist you know but you're supporting the arts keeping that going we're getting something a bit unique uh, and original and it's a connection with another person and another human you know a lot of time when people have a very unique or diverse um, kind of art collection it kind of says a lot about them as well you know it, it's even just for me I find all the art that I've had at home it's part of the tapestry of my life of if I look at this painting I got that off someone when I was living there or I swapped this with that person there's a story there's a narrative to it all you know and it's not just you know it couldn't you know it could quite easily be a New York City um, skyscraper scene that my neighbour has and my neighbour's neighbour has but when it's something different that's interesting that's good that's a story you know and that's that's what people love people love stories I'm Shane O'Driscoll I'm a visual artist by <laughs> what am I saying <laughs> I'm Shane O'Driscoll, I'm a visual artist based here in Cork and working out of Cork Printmakers. 